Hi, this is Mr. Evans. This video is going to look at a 24 mark question in paper three. Now, it's really, really important for you to um, answer the questions properly. Now, in paper three, it's all based on the case study. So in every single question, you need to use the case study. But you'll notice that the first five questions are all about the case study business, KMH. So if we have a, there's a 12 mark question, it was about KMH. This is a 16 mark question about KMH. 20 mark question, um, you know, what's the main uh, uh, cause of falling profits for KMH? So the first five questions require you to answer in the context of the case study. The 24 mark question is different in that you need to answer in the context of all businesses. So the um, question gives you a steer in terms of the case study business, in this case KMH. But the question is actually more broad than that and gives you an opportunity to bring in your knowledge of business outside just the case study. And in fact, if you don't do that, you're not fully answering the question, so you can't hit the top band of 24 marks. Um, so that's really, really important for you to bring in knowledge of other businesses. Um, now, the 24 mark question was uh, the nature of KMH's PLC's target market is probably the biggest influence on this marketing mix. To what extent is the nature of the target market the most important influence on the marketing mix of all businesses? Now, because uh, this question, you, you know, you can use the case study. Uh, to back up what you're saying and in fact um, there's you know really important information in here whenever AQA echo the key terms from the question in a paragraph that you can be pretty sure that there's relevant information in this paragraph in the case study to help you out right remember none of this information in the case study has appeared here by accident right it can all be used to help you answer one of the questions in the case study. So reading the case study is really like a puzzle, working out like what bit of the case study is relevant for what question. So nothing in there has appeared by accident, and that's worth remembering. It's all been put there on purpose to help you answer the, um, the questions. So what does the examiner's report say? The best students manage to get to grips with the demand of the question well, weighing up the influence of the target market on the marketing mix with other possible influences, such as competitors' actions. Now, if you know the specification well, which you should do going into this exam, obviously, um, you'll know that uh, it's a question on this part of the specification, the influences on the marketing mix. Now, what are the influences on the marketing mix? Well, this question is specifically about the influence that the target market has on the marketing mix. What the question is asking you to do is say, well, what else might have an influence on the marketing mix? So you could talk about any of these other factors in your answer and anything else that's relevant um, and that would give you a pretty good answer to the question, contrasting whether it's the target market that's the most important influence on the marketing mix, or is it one of these other factors that are identified in the specification? Your answer would certainly want to consider some of them. Um, so back to the examiner's report. You know, um, the best students... Um, weighed up whether it was the target market or other possible influences such as competitors' actions. So competition is in there as another factor. Uh, what marked out the best responses was a willingness to contrast KMH's position with that of one or more other contexts which were used to support counter arguments. In other words, bring in your own knowledge. This allowed effective judgments to be made and justified. Good judgment weighed up how the relative importance of the target market compared to other influences by highlighting how this might vary according to the circumstances of a business. Okay, so by using the phrase it depends might have been a good way to do your conclusion. Um, so I've had a go at answering the question. Um, I actually did this in timed conditions. Um, and my handwriting is so appalling, I've written it up on the computer. Um, that's actually a different question, but you can see that my handwriting is not.
not good. Um, so, so how have I structured my answer? Well, I've got three paragraphs. Reasons why the target market might be the most big, biggest influence on the marketing mix. Um, why it might not be, why other factors might be a uh, important and a conclusion. I did try and do this in time conditions, um, so it may not be the best answer, but hopefully it uh, will give you some ideas. So, arguably, the target market, those customers whose those customers and organisations aim at goods and services at, is the most important influence on the marketing mix for many businesses. What have I done with this first sentence? Well, I have actually chucked in a definition here, although it's probably not necessary because by I'll explain what the target market is in this answer. Um, but what I've certainly done is I've I've echoed the question. I've paraphrased the question here. Um, Arguably, the target market is the most important influence for many businesses. Okay, so that's directly answering the question. And the examiner should be um, pleased that I'm about to go on and answer the question, given this first sentence in the paragraph. So I've used the case study because um, KMH target people, uh, target customers who place few orders, each worth millions of pounds. KMH need to focus on the people and product elements of their marketing mix. So I'm not just making that up. Uh, I've got this from uh, here, um, and I, I'm pulling information out of these paragraphs here to help me form this argument in this paragraph. Their customers demand specialized products with advanced technical support from the sales and maintenance teams. And in order to do so, KMH dedicates a lot of resources to training staff and product development okay so i'm linking um kmh's target market of um customers who place few orders worth millions of pound to the marketing mix focusing on people and product other businesses like clothing retailers look at the incomes of their target market to set their selling prices so again i'm using um the influence that the target market has on the marketing mix, i.e. the pricing strategy, in the context of another business, in this case, clothing. Primark and Burberry have very different target markets which dictate their pricing strategies and distribution channels. Uh, finally, the preferences of an organization's target market determine the pro promotional strategies employed. So trying to link the target market again to the marketing mix using an example. In this case, Cadbury's mass market products are advertised on primetime television programs like Coronation Street in order to raise awareness. So hopefully what I've proved to the examiner is that the marketing mix affects uh, people and product elements of the marketing mix. In the case of Primark and Burberry, it affects their uh, price and their place. And in the um, case of Cadbury's, um, it, it, it uh, influences their promotion. Okay, so their promotional strategies. This shows that an organization's target market influences the marketing mix employed by a range of businesses. So hopefully, contributing towards answering this question about whether the target market is the most important influence of, on all businesses. Basically, this says it's quite important for a range of businesses. However, it is clear that there are other factors that determine the marketing mix of many organizations. So again, the examiner should be pleased reading this first sentence because it's clear I'm focused on the question. Firstly, the budget and finance available can play a huge role in dictating the promotion that small businesses are able to undertake. For example, small takeaways will often rely on printing cheap leaflets, pay for free letterbox in the local area, or some multinational uh, fast food chain like McDonald's can afford a uh, national newspaper advertising campaign. Okay, so what have I done here? I've brought in another factor that can influence the marketing mix, and that's the amount of finance available. It's not actually listed here, the finance available, but of course it is a factor um, that's brought in. But um, as long as it's relevant, that's okay. But I will try and bring in a couple of these other points. Um, the type of product being sold will also have an influence on the marketing mix. So the type of product being sold um, is listed here. 
So the examiner should know that I've got a good understanding of what's in the specification. These days, it is relatively easy to stream entertainment products like music and film via the internet, meaning the place element of the marketing mix has been affected. In the case of personal services like gyms, restaurants and hairdressers, the internet has less of an impact as people still need to go to physical locations to purchase these products. So maybe I should have linked this paragraph back to the question, but I was trying to do this in time conditions. Um, a good answer, though, would probably have linked this back to the question, showing that the uh, target market isn't the only influence on an organization's marketing mix. So in conclusion, it's clear that the target market is a huge influence on the marketing mix of many companies as it will determine the product produced, the price it's sold for, and the promotional methods used to target these customers. So what have I done? I've tried to answer the question. It's a huge influence on the marketing mix, um, and I've backed it up by saying it affects the product, the price, and the promotion. However, I believe the biggest impact on the marketing mix is their marketing objectives. Now, I've done something that I don't always advise here, which is bringing in um, something I've not analysed before, bringing in something new. Um, the marketing objectives is listed here as an impact on the marketing mix. Well, why have I brought it into a conclusion? This is because these objectives determine the strategic direction of a company, therefore determining their target market, the budget made available, and the type of product produced. So this, what I'm saying is the overarching impact on the organization's uh, marketing mix is the marketing objectives. That affects the type of product which I'd mentioned, the target market which I'd mentioned, and it also, the marketing objectives will determine the finance, the budget made available for, the, um, for an organization's marketing. Um, so in conclusion, what have I done? I've tried to answer the question. Um, I've said the target market is a big influence. However, the biggest influence, um, uh, the most important influence for all businesses tends to be the marketing objectives. Um, and I've tried to make that clear. Other ways of writing the conclusion would be it depends. You could say it depends on the size of the business. Um, you know, uh, that might be a way to go as well. You know, I'm certainly not saying there's just one way to answer these questions, but hopefully this gives you a model that you can work with and try and apply um, to evaluation questions in the future.